Okay, so previously I talked about linear probability models when our dependent variable is a binary variable. And as I said earlier, there are at least two problems with the linear probability models. That is, their probability distribution could be beyond uh, 0 and 1. And we know that the probabilities always lie in between 0 and 1. So sometimes the predictions from the linear probability model could tell you that uh, the probabilities are either negative or greater than 1. And we know that uh, this is problematic. And then we also saw there was a problem of heteroscedasticity with uh, the linear probability models. And then the partial effect of explanatory variable was constant. And here I'm going to look at another type of uh, nonlinear model for estimating a model with a binary dependent variable. Essentially what we are interested in uh, knowing in a binary variable is the probability that y will be equal to 1. That is the probability of uh, success given all the x variables. And uh, we can represent this type of relationship as g beta 0 plus beta 1 beta k. And there are various forms of this uh, g that has been suggested to estimate this nonlinear model. And here I'm going to talk about two forms. One is the logit model, which assumes that this uh, g follows the exponent of z over 1 plus the exponent of z. And this is uh, the cumulative distribution function for a standard logistic random uh, variable. Similarly, the second type of model assumes a different form of uh, G and uh, this type of model is called a probit model. And this assumes the standard normal CDF, which can be represented in the integral form as this is the integral, which will vary from negative infinity to Z and uh, phi of v d of v. Okay, essentially all we are doing here is we are assuming that this g, this nonlinear function, it can either follow a cumulative distribution function for a standard logistic random variable like uh, this or it can follow the standard normal CDF in the form of uh, integral. Right, so in most of the cases, both of these models will give you almost identical results. Only in rare cases, the results uh, will be different. And uh, there are many advantages of a logit and probit model. The major advantage is that uh, it improves upon linear probability models by restricting the probabilities to lie in between uh, 0 and 1. That's why these models are very popular, especially in machine learning courses where in many cases you have a binary dependent variable. One thing to note here is that uh, that you cannot get the magnitude of uh, your slope coefficients straightforwardly by estimating either logit or probit model. To get the magnitude you have to calculate average partial effects or average marginal effects. Also for the exclusion restrictions normally in the usual case we use f-test but in the case of uh, a nonlinear model, like a logit model, you can either apply a walled test or a likelihood ratio test. The R-squared interpretation of uh, the logit and probit model is a little bit different. That's why for logit and probit model, you need to calculate what we call McFadden pseudo R-squared to talk about the goodness of it. So here is what uh, we do while estimating logit or probit model. First, we estimate a logit or probit model and get the direction and statistical significance of uh, the relationship between x and y. And then we calculate average partial effects to get the magnitude. So this is the main difference between uh, the usual models that we were seeing so far and the linear probability model that we saw earlier that we can get all these three things from the regression output. But with the logit and probit model, you can get the direction and statistical significance uh, of the slope coefficients straightforwardly from the regression output 
but to get the magnitude of the relationship you have to calculate average partial effects okay in the next video i'm gonna show you an example in r about how to run the logit and profit models in r